things always work out just the way Harvey says they will. It's very, very personal. Did I tell you he could stop clocks? To what purpose? Well, you've heard the expression, his face will stop a clock. Well, Harvey can look at your clock and stop it. And you can go anywhere you like, with anyone you like, and stay as long as you like, and when you get back, not one minute will have ticked by. internet friends welcome to my channel and welcome to the second installment of wellness Wednesday where I dive into different topics in hopes of supporting my health journey and today I'm taking a look at sodium because not only can it be a factor in water retention but also I happen to eat copious amounts of shrimp like every day so grab your water bottles and let's get started but first a disclaimer I am NOT a doctor I am NOT a nutritionist and I'm not a dietitian. I'm just your average person with an internet connection. That being said, let's take a look at sodium's role as an essential major mineral. So sodium is primarily known for its role in fluid balance, nerve function, and muscle contraction. For fluid balance, sodium controls how much water is inside and outside of the cells. In a process called osmoregulation, sodium's role is to help regulate osmotic pressure which regulates the movement of water in and out of cells. This process ensures that the cells maintain their proper volume and functionality. With nerve function, sodium helps generate electrical signals called action potentials. When a nerve cell receives a signal, sodium channels open, allowing sodium ions to enter the cell and change its charge. When a nerve cell receives a signal, this triggers an electrical impulse that travels along the nerve fiber and after the impulse passes, sodium ions are pumped out of the cell, resetting it for the next signal. And with muscle contraction, the previously mentioned action potentials trigger the release of calcium ions, which then lead to muscle contraction. Then after contraction, an ion pump, which is basically a protein molecule called the sodium potassium pump, transports sodium ions out of the cell and potassium ions back into the cell resetting the cell for later movements. It's important to note here that sodium balance is closely linked to the balance of other electrolytes, such as potassium, chloride, and biocarbonate. So now that we know what sodium does, let's take a look at the recommended intake. So the recommended intake can vary on several factors such as age, sex, overall health, but most health organizations recommend limiting your intake to 2,300 milligrams per day for adults, with an ideal target of 1500 milligrams per day. The key is to find a good balance. So let's talk about the risks associated with an imbalance. Excessive sodium can have negative effects on cardiovascular health. High sodium intake is associated with hypertension, high blood pressure, which is a risk factor for heart disease, stroke, and kidney disease. On the other hand, low sodium levels, also known as hyponatremia, I think I'm saying that right, can lead to symptoms such as weakness, fatigue, muscle cramps, and in severe cases, seizures and coma. So where to find sodium? The most common source of sodium is table salt. However, sodium is naturally found in many foods, especially in seafood, dairy products, and certain vegetables. Processed and packaged foods such as canned foods, snack foods, processed meats, and condiments often contain high levels of sodium, due to added salts and preservatives. Foods that you could find in your cupboards that contain high levels of sodium include processed and canned foods, certain types of cheese like feta or blue cheese, cured meats, shellfish like crab, shrimp, and lobster, olives, pickles, seaweed, certain vegetables such as celery, spinach, and carrots, and whole grains like barley. And it's no surprise to anyone that high amounts of sodium can be found when dining out. Restaurants tend to add excessive salt to enhance the flavors, but here are some tips to help you keep your sodium levels in check while dining out. You can choose fresh options like fruits, salads, vegetables, or lean proteins like grilled chicken or fish. You can request no added salt 
Many restaurants are willing to accommodate special requests, especially if you have a dietary restriction. Go easy on sauces, dressings, and condiments. Consider asking for those things on the side so that you can control how much goes on your food or choose low sodium alternatives such as vinaigrette or olive oil and vinegar. Be cautious with soups and broths. They can be surprisingly high in sodium. But clear broths or vegetable based broths, that's a hard one, tend to have lower sodium levels. And look for healthier preparations. Choose foods that are baked, grilled, steamed, or boiled rather than fried or heavily sauteed. And lastly, read the menu carefully. Look for menu items labeled low sodium or heart healthy. Some restaurants are now providing that nutritional information, which is great because it's gonna help us make more informed choices. So I'm gonna be real honest, I'm not actually watching my sodium levels. I consistently have normal blood pressure readings and I drink a ton of water. I also don't have a history of hypertension or cardiovascular disease. The only reason why I would wanna watch it is because of water retention, which I'm getting my period every week, so I don't really care about that anyway. But if you are concerned about too much sodium concentration in your blood, you can dilute it by drinking a lot of water. Now there's some nuance there. Make sure you talk to a doctor. But since I have no problems and my sodium levels aren't astronomical, this is the best way to make sure it's a nice balance. So there you have it. Sodium balance is essential for overall health and by maintaining a balanced diet, staying hydrated, and being mindful of sodium intake, I can support my health journey and ensure that my body is functioning optimally. It's all about the right balance that works for me and my individual health needs. Everyone's needs are unique, so it's always good to consult with a healthcare professional when looking for recommended guidance tailored to your specific needs. All right, so now that I have a better idea of what role sodium plays in my body, I'm feeling pretty good about where I'm at on it, honestly. I had a ton of it yesterday, but I also overate. Anyway, did you learn anything new? I did, I did. I had no idea that it was doing all that behind the scenes. All right, so carrying on with the theme of individual needs, um, I had set Wednesdays for any kind of workout video that I had found that I wanted to try out. Um, my needs are saying, just take it easy, girl. I am in quite a bit of pain. I'm very dizzy, very dizzy. So just gonna do a treadmill. I might do derby. I might skip the squats. We will see. I guess you guys can just see right now because we're gonna just go ahead and switch on over to the next roll. wrap up another Wellness Wednesday, I want to leave you with some food for thought. In the world of wellness and weight loss, consistency is our best friend. And just like you can count on the sun rising every morning, you can count on me to bring you a daily vlog. So keep striving, keep thriving, go ahead and be a little salty sometimes. Mm. And remember, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye!